Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you 02 July. It's a Tuesday here, just after the RBA cut rates 25 basis points as expected. We've got um, some short term moves here in the Aussie. This is the one minute chart, which we don't like to use too often, but tells a story. You can see cut, wham, 56 low. Uh, now it's moved back to 86 to the highs. Unpleasant for shorts like us, but we will sit with this. Um, we have a good average on this position. We will be selling today again between 95 and 05. Uh, and this portion will become a tradable short versus the core short that we had put on yesterday as our weekly trade of the week so 95 between 95 and 05 we see this thing is going to probably uh, have show, have some resistance and then we'll be trading that tactically so sort of buying 82s and then reselling 90s and um, that sort of that sort of idea while we keep yesterday's core short uh, just core short Elsewhere, let's look at the DXY. Uh, this ended up breaking the key 9660 200 day yesterday. Closed at 80, now at 78. Uh, this is important and gives us a little bit of confidence uh, with our Aussie shorts. Looks like we're going to get a stronger dollar here um, in the coming days. On a daily close, just got to keep your eye on 96.60. I don't think we're going to retest it today. It was quite a powerful move yesterday. Uh, we'll look at the components in a second, but um, after 18 months of being above the 200 day, we broke down below it for six days. Now we're back above it. You could argue that we could get some churn here, so just some sideways movement. But as long as we're above 96.60, we're, we're sellers of euro dollar, uh, we're buyers of dollars in general. Dollar Swiss also um, is a good horse here since the carry is the strongest. Let's look at euro dollar real quick. Three days of indecision going into, um, going into the trade weekend. Market got caught long euros. Here we are. We're back in the middle of the range here, so let's not get too, too excited. Um, if you were clever enough to sell uh, 113.45s uh, at 6.50 a.m. yesterday, then I would argue that you can hold at least a portion of this position. But it is tradable. Um, this is the 4th of July week, as all of you Americans know, but people in Europe should be aware that a lot of Americans have taken this week off. They will probably stick their heads in front of the screen on Friday because it's non-farms. Um, but this is typically a week where we don't get outsized moves. So I wouldn't be prepared for like euro dollar falling out of a tree here. Uh, more of a rangy move lower is what we're looking for. Take a look at dollar Swiss. Obviously it's going to be the same chart. Interestingly, we did not close the gap from Friday. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to close that gap anytime soon. Gaps in FX are unusual, right? Because we're a 24-hour market. They happen at the once. They can really only happen once a week, um, which is the Monday open. So it's important. So this this gap looks looks like it's not going to get closed. I can see dollar Swiss. Coming back to test this 9970 uh, in the coming days, and then um, you know the big crossroads will be, of course, Friday's uh, employment numbers. But for now, we think you can be core long dollars. Dollar yen is one of the few dollars that I'm cautious about being core long of. Looks like now we're going to trade above uh, yesterday's high. 53. I just don't have a strong feel for dollar yen here. Um, and I, because stocks moved left the way they did, um, 
I'm worried about dollar yen as as a vehicle for dollar longs. In fact, um, we will be looking to sell this thing between 108.80 and 109.10 if we do get up there. But I'd just be cautious about being long dollar yen, just like I'm cautious about being long dollar CAD. Dollar yen and dollar CAD are not going up very well. Dollar CAD, we've talked about why it doesn't go up very well. Basically, it's the strength of their economy. And you want to be looking for places to sell um, dollar CAD. If, um, if you're so inclined, one of the trendier trades we've had uh, since Draghi is EuroCAD here. This is now um, Doji 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down days here. But this is one of these, this makes perfect sense trades, which doesn't happen too often in FX, to be fair. Um, EuroCAD on a one-way trip south here. I would not sell it here at 148.17, but this is something to look at as we get a bounce or if we get a bounce up to sort of 149, 149.20. Uh, short EuroCAD looks very sensible and it's been trading in a very, very trendy, uh, trendy way. So something to keep in mind. Definitely late to the party here. I would not hit a bid at 148.17, I repeat, but you know, now you're looking maybe for a 50% retracement of this five-day bar here. Uh, this one makes sense to us, as does um, Euronaki. We talked about this yesterday. This was the Norges Bank. Bang. We haven't made a new low, 964.60, and now we're just sideways here, Euro Norway. Certainly, this is a good place to add 964.70, but core short Euro Norway and just trading it to a better average uh, seems very, very sensible to me. The Norges Bank and the Bank of Canada, these are two banks that are actually hiking amidst all of the cutting of rates globally. Uh, and so this, this is going to come home to roost eventually uh, and bleed into FX prices. Let's quickly look at equities and crude. Doji did not fill the gap there. Came close, but couldn't quite do it. The low was 55.50. This is very interesting now. So we have a doji after new all-time highs. Both sides are in play, right? Through 29.82 should should bleed into 3,000, um, and below 29.55 uh, should cause a little bit of a damp. Could should cause a little bit of damage, and would signal maybe a short-term top. We're just trading this tactically. You can make a lot of. Um, Excuses for your for stocks higher mainly because all the professionals are bearish I can tell you the guys that I saw in Paris and the guys that I saw in London every single one of them is bearish um, That's normally not great uh, I mean a few of these guys have excellent track records, but I just didn't like the fact that everyone was unanimously bearish US stocks as we're approaching the all-time highs uh, that said, valuations, uh, possible recession around the corner, trade, and then the bond market, it was the main reason these guys are bearish. They're basically saying the bond market always wins. The bond market is saying the U.S. is fucked. Um, but that said, we're just looking at this tactically. 29.55 and 29.82, these are the key points to watch uh, S&Ps today. I do want to bring this chart up just because it's insane. This is Boone's, minus 36 basis points. I mean, I feel bad for, for Germans who have saved all of their life and are now looking for a fixed income to retire on or I just don't understand how this can possibly work uh, within the structure of that country. I won't touch it because I don't understand it. 
I was bearish at this when it was at zero basis points. Now it's at 37. We cut ours long, long ago, just moving on. But wow, who would have ever guessed boons are minus 40 basis point. 10 year boons are minus 40. This is insanity. Um, but this we'll talk about, I guess, another day when it starts to shake free. Finally, crude, same exact bar as the equity bar. Doji, so that's indecision near the recent highs. 6034, 5837. These are the two points you have to watch today uh, and see how the price looks and see where the action is. And this will give you some indication on what's going on with the risk. Um, indecision at the highs here. So we're just patiently waiting to see which side gets gets dinged. Do not take a view on a doji. You need confirmation. So everyone stay calm uh, and just be patient both with the ES chart and with the CL chart. Focus today just as a just as a recap. We'll be selling Aussie, uh, we're selling high ones in Aussie. We'll also be selling high ones in Euro, um, right around the, between figure and 15. And we'll be looking at dollar Swiss to see if it creates some sort of technical or tactical way to get long. We're less comfortable with dollar Swiss, oddly, even though we live in Switzerland. Um, Euro dollar and Aussie will be our horse uh, on the long dollar side. Good luck out there, people. Make some dough. Uh, be patient. Normally, this is a quiet time in the markets, so don't force anything. And I will see you all tomorrow. Ciao.